Hey everybody, it's Alan here for drumgrades.com. Today it's quite an important video because I'm speaking about one of my fundamental core approaches I use for teaching drums right from the word go in a beginner's first ever lesson. I love to use this method to help read most importantly, but eventually help lead to creativity, especially when playing fills. It's of course the drinks or drinks fills. You guys might have heard me refer to this quite a few times throughout the grade videos. And here is the video teaching you this approach I like to use. So let's get started. Basically, the drinks are five drinks. We have tea, coffee, lemonade, hot chocolate, and Coca-Cola. Now, for some of you guys who are having lessons from different teachers, you might have different names for those, but that's what I call them. So there's five there. We can use those drinks to help us learn some very important rhythms that are used everywhere, all the time on the drums. Those five rhythms are used so much. They're the foundation rhythms. Of course, there's lots of others too, but these are gonna really serve you so well for now. You can use the words to help translate into rhythms because it's very easy to forget how rhythms go. When you're looking at music, it can often look like hieroglyphics and look really confusing. But if you just use this core approach, the drinks, it's gonna help you start reading much faster. Let's maybe start breaking down the fills. We're gonna begin with the most basic one. It's T, it's a one single note, and hopefully on screen right about here, you can see a T. In 4-4 four, four time, not gonna to get too much into theory, but in 4-4 four, four time, we have four Ts throughout, evenly spaced, and a T would sound like this. That's all it is. I want you to remember how these different drinks look. Store them in your memory because that's the most vital part of this. You start to remember how they look. So when you are confronted by them in your various pieces or music, you can remember, ah, that's a T. So if we look at a T in its most basic form, we have a black note head with a single line. Another name for this might be a crotchet or a quarter note, but obviously we're just gonna worry about T for now. So this is a single beat. Moving on, we're gonna go for coffee next. Easy peasy, just two notes. Right, left, we could stick that for now. So as you can see on screen, um, a coffee is two notes connected by one line. And again, in a bar of four, four time, we'd have four of those throughout the bar, evenly spaced. Coffee, 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 coffee. that would be a whole bar. One more time, just the coffee in its own. So again, get that in your mind. Two notes connected by one line, that's a coffee. Again, the other names for that would be quavers or eighth notes. And we often use eighths in our eight beat. That's why it's called an eight beat because there's eight hi-hats throughout the bar. Next, we're gonna go for Coca-Cola, another fundamental rhythm, Coca-Cola. As you can see, we've got four notes connected by two lines, Coca-Cola. Good rule of thumb to use when you're reading rhythms is the more lines notes have connecting them, the quicker they are, okay? So as we've now got two lines, these notes are gonna be quicker. There's a Coca-Cola and you can say the word to help the rhythm, Coca-Cola. Four notes connected by two lines. Another name for this would be semiquavers or 16th notes. You may have heard of 16 beats. Now we could maybe take the Coca-Cola and apply it all around the kit. And actually going back a stage, this is something you might wanna do with the teas and the coffees as well. We'll just go for the Coca-Cola for now though. We're gonna play a Coca-Cola here, a Coca-Cola here, a Coca-Cola here, and then a Coca-Cola on the floor tom to finish up. And you get that classic feel. Now, just to help you keep track of where you are, just think Coca-Cola. rather than one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which can be a bit of a mouthful. There's Coca-Cola. We've got two left. Next is gonna be lemonade. Have a look at a lemonade. We have two notes with two lines connected to one note with one line. So as we mentioned earlier, the more lines you have connecting, the faster the notes are gonna move. That's gonna mean the first two notes are gonna move quicker 
than the last one, lemonade. And again, there you go, the word helps, lemonade. Just say the word, play the rhythm. The common sticking for a lemonade might be right, left, right. Lemonade, it's kind of like a Coca-Cola, but with the last note missed off. Lemonade. And maybe we could take that all around the drums as well. There's lemonade. Last but not least, we have hot chocolate. I often say hot chocolate's like the brother of lemonade because as you can see, they're very similar. They're kind of a mirror image of one another. Hot chocolate has a single note to begin with connected with two, connected to two notes with two lines, okay? So that means the second two are gonna move quicker. Hot chocolate, hot chocolate. There it is. And again, a common sticking for this would be right, right, left. Hot chocolate. Now let's put them all together in one long line going around the kit. Four hot chocolates. Try and keep them even. Hot chocolate can be a tricky one sometimes. It sometimes gets a bit skippy. That type of thing, but we want to aim to keep it even. And I really do suggest you guys take each individual drink and, and play it around the kit, get really comfortable with it. So there we go, we've used the drinks for the first stage, which is just to get used to these fundamental rhythms. Now comes the interesting bit, because we can use those drinks to really help us when reading. Throughout initial grade, grade one, grade two, right up to grade eight, you are going to see teas, coffees, lemonades, hot chocolates, Coca-Colas used so much. And if you can just get those in your head and remember what they look like, you are going to read them immediately. Let's take, for example, a song called Road to Nowhere from grade one, and it's a bar of music that's used a lot in that. And it sounds a little bit like this. So what we have there is hot chocolate, hot chocolate, Coca-Cola coffee. You can see the music on screen. Now, for anyone that doesn't use the drinks fills, looking at that fill, there's lots of notes going on there, can look quite confusing. But if we just think, hot chocolate, hot chocolate, Coca-Cola coffee. We know what they look like. We've got the feel. We've almost played it before we've touched the drums because we know how it's gonna sound. Hot chocolate, hot chocolate, Coca-Cola coffee. And that is just one example of how you can really use the drinks to help you read. Another important thing to remember is that each one of these drinks, whether it be a tea, a hot chocolate, Coca-Cola, what have you, occupies the same amount of space. They all last one beat. They all actually last the same length as a T. So they all fit into that same amount of space. Once again, in four, four time, that's gonna mean you're gonna get four of them. Any drink you can choose, um, there's gonna be four in a bar, all right? If you're playing in three, four, there'd be three in a bar, two, four, two in a bar, five, four, five in a bar. That's about as far into theory as I'm gonna get for now. I don't wanna to get too complicated. We're just talking about this fundamental technique you can use to help you read. So sometimes the drinks could be maybe split between drums. Let's take an example from grade three called Natural Blues. This is how it will sound. A little bit slower. Hopefully you've seen now it's hot chocolate lemonade, lemonade hot chocolate. But we're splitting the first bit of the fill between the bass and the snare. It's still hot chocolate and that's how you can use the method regardless of whether the drink is split or not. You can still use your drinks to help you figure out what's going on. So moving on next, we can also use our drinks for some really fun, creative fill ideas. Just armed with the five drinks and the most important rule, look, per bar, there's four of them. With those two pieces of information, you can come up with lots of great fills because all you have to do is choose four drinks and you've got a cool fill. Let's make it easy for now and say, look, our four drinks we're gonna play on each individual drum. So drink one will be here, drink two will be here, drink three will be here, drink four will be here. So let's say for example, we just went quite simply for now. Let's go um, tea, coffee, tea, coffee, okay? 
got a cool feel. But I know you guys are gonna be wanting more out there, so let's maybe make it a bit more complicated. Let's maybe go Coca-Cola, coffee, tea, lemonade. There you go. So there's an example of how you can just take any four drinks and immediately come up with a cool fill. What about hot chocolate, hot chocolate, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola? And when you get slick, you can get a bit faster. And I just finished up there with Coca-Cola's all round. So as you can see, hopefully guys, you can see the potential here with these drinks. Not only can you use them to help your reading, you can also use them for some really creative fun. When you get to the higher grades, there might be sections where you're called upon to invent your own fills. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky when people put you on the spot to come up with ideas. It's quite overwhelming, isn't it? You're almost um, overwhelmed by the sheer amount of ideas available. But just by using these five drinks, it's sort of like a little doorway into creativity. It just gives you a simple method you can use to come up with cool ideas. And of course, you can take that step further by moving in different orders. So I'm moving on different drums and on the last one, you might have noticed I split a drink. That's a lemonade, but two mids and a floor. What if we use that all around? That's just lemonade with the aid of lemonade on a different drum. And we could go to town with that. I'm just splitting drinks in random orders there. Don't quite know what I played, but you get the idea. You can have loads of fun with that. Maybe start off with an idea of what you're gonna do, choose your drinks, and then go from there, okay? Loads of fun to be had. You could even take it a step further, get the bass drum involved like I did on the natural blues fill. So you can maybe go, there's hot chocolate with bass starting. That's lemonade, lemonade, coffee, lemonade. Just random ideas off the top of my head at the moment. Some of them sound better than others. We could get symbols involved. That there was Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, coffee, Coca-Cola, I think. So <laughs> by the time I've finished playing, I've forgotten what I've done. So that's Coca-Cola starting with the first note on the crash. And of course, just to make the, the feel and the cymbal sound cool, I'm adding a bass drum to it as well. So you, you get the idea, guys. There's the drinks fills. This is a very quick video um, just to outline how I like to use these, these things in my teaching. I can't recommend highly enough how good it can be to use these. Sometimes you feel a bit silly <laughs> doing it, of course, but it works. It's really simple and it works. Number one, you can use these to help you play rhythms. Number two, you can use these to help you read rhythms. And number three, as you heard, you can use them to create great new fills. So I think that about sums it up, guys. Attached to the video is a PDF of our five drinks. I definitely suggest you guys lock those in your mind, remember them, because we're gonna come up against them lots in our grades, but also, other pieces you might come across outside of the grades. So learn those and good luck guys, take care. I will see you next time, bye for now.